All right, hey guys, welcome to Sam Co Workshop. Jason here. Today we're going to be talking about why do most vehicles have two recovery points? Okay, why do we want two recovery points? Why do most of the trucks, Jeeps, things like that have two separate recovery points? We usually got on this Jeep, we got one on the front or two on the front. On this one being a Rubicon model, their off-road model, which is also their rock crawler and that kind of stuff, the fact that it's going to get stuck more often, they also give us two on the back, really three, because we have the hitch as well, too. Usually most trucks will have the hitch on the back. Some, like the Forerunner and some of the insets I'm showing you, they'll also have another another one right up under here or something like that that you can connect to. But why why multiple hitch points? Why not just one? Like you see some of the Gladiator Sports and uh, Willys and stuff like that only have one here, but that's really one here plus that one for a total of two. Okay, and why do you on most of your, pretty much all your pickup trucks uh, you see two tow hooks on the front? And the reason for this is because of the weight. Okay, because you got to understand the reality of pulling these out and being able to bridle between these to hook a strap here. And then the same strap going from here, coming out and looping around and going to here, and then pulling from that one strap connected at both points equalizes the weight load. Okay, you have to remember what's going on here when you're actually recovering a vehicle. Um, if this, like this vehicle right here, on this simple ground, pulling this is about 30% of its actual weight capacity. Let's it's four, it's about 4,500 pounds. Let's just call it 5,000 pounds just for the heck of it. Say it was a full size or something. 5,000 pounds at 30%, you're you're still at like you're going to be like 2,000 pounds of pulling force out uh, to roll this across here in neutral. Not a big deal, okay. But now if you get this stuck, okay, and this thing sinks down, if it sinks down to the rim which is about right here, if it's stuck that deep into the mud, then it's one time the vehicle weight. Okay, this is a I, this is a, a very real proven generalized number. But if you're stuck that deep in the mud or sand, it's one time the vehicle weight. So that's 5,000 pounds of pulling resistance. 5,000 pounds of pull to get it out of here. Now again, something that can be done on a, on a one hook thing if needed. But if you are sunk to the axles, Okay, if you are sit to, stuck to the axles in mud or in sand, it requires two times the vehicle weight. If this is a 5,000 pound vehicle, now you are talking about 10,000 pounds of pull force to recover this vehicle. Okay, now that's going to mean that you're going to put some serious, serious pull on this vehicle to get it off of here. If it's stuck on the frame... If you're sitting on the frame rails, you're at two and a half times the vehicle weight. If it's a 5,000 pound vehicle, I put you at 12,500 pounds of pulling force needed to get this vehicle unstuck from that. When you start getting, if think, imagine if you were a 9,000 pound diesel. Okay, now you're at 18 and you know 23,000 pounds to get that thing unstuck. So having multiple tow points on the front allows you to re it, instead of putting all that weight right on this one hook right on this one frames point one on this one spot it allows you to bridle between the two and expand that weight out okay it gives you that ability to extend that and get the most pulling or get you know to protect the vehicle and have more um to spread out that that load so it's not so instead of being like if we needed two times the weight of this vehicle instead of being ten thousand pounds pulling right here we got five thousand pounds pulling here five thousand pounds pulling here we spread out that weight that's the reason that we have two tow hooks on every vehicle that you you know most of your off-road vehicles it's a great benefit same in the back okay we could come back here and if you don't have an extra tow point and we needed that same 10,000 pounds to pull this out of here, we could have that hitch. You put that receiver pin into that, rich, that hitch pin. You don't ever pull from this. You'll put that receiver in there. But you could pull 10,000 pounds by pulling on this, but that's a lot of weight for one pulling point. But if you were to connect here and connect here and bridle that together, or in my case, I'd go from here to here, right to the, because these go right to the frame rails. I'd go from here to here and bridle that out connect right here now i have five thousand pounds of weight there five thousand pounds of weight there rather than ten thousand pounds pulling from there so when you really get into the messy stuff and you're really getting stuck in um that's where the extra recovery points are advantageous now what if you only have just a hitch Okay, there are a lot of companies, especially if you have a, a off-road vehicle like a Tacoma, things like that. There are companies like ARB that will actually make hitches 
or recovery points that will mount on your frame rails and come out right down here uh, that you can buy. They're not cheap. They're about 200 bucks, but they're well worth it. Uh, that's why you see people put on aftermarket bumpers too. For example, if I were to buy the Colorado, okay, the, uh, the trail or the, uh, the 2023 or newer Chevy Colorado, it does not have any rear recovery points. Most, most trucks do not. Okay, um, other than the hitch. They think of the hitch is good enough. But if I bought a Colorado, I would probably change the rear bumper out to a bumper that actually has hitch points there. Um, because then I could actually plug my winch into my hitch receiver, run that out, and then run a, 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 a snatch block back and connect to that other point. And then I could, you you know, I could, uh, we'll get into winching techniques, but then basically I could double the line power, but I'm also spreading 5,000 here, 5,000 there on a stuck recovery weight. So these are the reasons that you have them on there. Um, and you see a lot of people pulling from just one, and that's fine, like I said, for simple pulls. But uh, when you start getting stuck in the mud, if you can, multiple location pulls are definitely a better idea. Um, you, like I said, and you, you also, you have to understand what you're pulling and how you're going to pull it. Um, if you are going, if you are stuck really bad, I promise you this, a shovel is your best friend. A shovel is what's going to get you out of that whole entire situation. Other, you gotta, well, I'll give you an example. I had a buddy got stuck out here just about two weeks ago. He was stuck out here pretty good. First thing we saw is how stuck he was. I thought, okay, so we put just a regular, regular recovery strap on it. I stretched the slack out, and I did not tug him. You know, I'm not going to bounce a, re, a simple uh, recovery strap. You don't, you don't bounce and jerk those like you see people doing all over YouTube. But I put a strap on, I got it, I got lined up, I hit it, we tried, he hit it, his wheels were spinning, we found out he was high centered, there was no moving him. Immediately scrapped that idea, it's not going to work. Then we went to a snatch strap, put a snatch strap, ARB snatch strap that actually has 30% elasticity to it. We hooked that on there with a soft shackle, hooked it on mine, look at all the gnats, jeez oh man. And, uh... And we hit it, and I, you know, I gave it about a, a two foot slack, two foot, two feet of slack in there. Hit it and stayed on it, and it didn't move him much either. When we, I tried it once more, a little bit more, and I said, nope, that's it, because I know what his recovery hooks on that Tacoma are not rated. They're not hooks like what we have on here. They're good points, but they're not as beefy and as strong as the points are on here, or as I was pulling from the points on the back of mine. Okay, these are a much more uh, rated and durable hook than what he had on the front of that Tacoma. Knowing that, and risking the fact of not wanting to pull that toe point off of that, that recovery point off of his Tacoma or break it, especially when it's on something like an ARB snatch strap or a kinetic rope. Rather than so, after two two tries at a, at a light duty tug and or moderate tug there, knowing that it wasn't moving him at all, your next best thing you do shovel get your shovel out and start digging out. So, if you're buried, he was buried like this deep. Okay, you start digging those pass out and give yourself a nice, smooth ramp out of there. And that's what we did. We took 10 minutes, we grabbed two shovels, and we started digging out all that, that hard wall that's right here in front of the uh, the tires where it's dug down. But we dug that approach out, made it a nice approach, did the same for all four tires, and had that ARB strap connected right there again too. And then that time I did that same not hard pull, and he hit the gas, I hit it, and I kept pulling with that on there. And like I said, we yanked him right out of there as smooth as butter. But you got to know what you're doing. A single recovery point on the front of a Tacoma is not going to handle very hard hits with uh, with things like that. And if that breaks off, it comes flying through the back of my truck. I'm going to be pretty pissed about it. So that's the reason a lot of vehicles now come with two recovery points. Having two recovery points is a gold mine. Um, and at Tacoma had another recovery point over here on this side too. It was kind of hard to get to there, um, but I could have. And had that not came out with that slight little tug and we would have had to go harder, you know, to get it off those frame rails. If it would have took, if it didn't pull when I just did that, that shot for him, my next step was going to be to actually bridle from his recovery point here with a soft shackle on his round one underneath loop it over and then connect it to that one on that side, connect it into that and then pull them a little harder. But point being is you have to know what your vehicle, what, what your hooks are rated for, what your vehicle is. You got to understand the realities of what you're pulling and how to do it the right way and how to get things out without doing any damage or causing anything that's a dangerous situation. The reason they put two fail or hooks on most vehicles, fail safe, bulletproof. 
gives you that way to distribute that weight and save the hook so you're not going to hurt nothing or break anything off so uh, just a little insight for you a lot of people don't understand why is it you know is it just a hook to one no, is it just a hook to both all the time? It's whatever is going to work for the scenario you're in. But in order to understand that, you got to know what you're dealing with. And a good rule of thumb, if you are on flat ground like this, you're about 30 to 40% of the vehicle weight to tow it and or to pull it. If you are stuck in the mud up to where the rim is, it's one time the vehicle weight to get it on to get it pulled out of the pulled pulled out of there, sand or mud. And if you are stuck up to the lug nuts, if you hit the lug nuts, you are basically two times the weight of that vehicle to get it unstuck. And if you are sitting on a frame, ra frame rails, it is two and a half times the weight of the vehicle. That's the reason they put two hooks on the front for you. And that is also the reason, like I said, that, the, that some, some trucks will actually put two hooks on the back. Now this one again has three, one, two, and three. It's a beautiful thing. I can bridle to these together. I always did wonder though why they actually have them turned this way instead of flipped around because I would think that flipping them around would let me bridle a little tighter and not be pulling from right here. But again, to each your own, whatever, however they do it. But I love the fact I got those, but this is one point here also. So technically I have three points on the back. As long as you have a hitch receiver that you can put in a uh, recovery shackle, and then you also have another point under there, you got it, you got it, you know, use it, use Use the points you have, and the more of them you use, the more you distribute the weight is basically what we're getting at. And that's the reason they put them on there. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.